Before Red Bar Radio became the underground legend we know today, there was a pivotal year, 2007. This marked the year when he had Hannibal Buress on his show, T.J. Miller, and countless others. Let's get into it. Very similar. This is very embarrassing. As many of you know, I don't like to uh, make announcements. To understand how we got here, we must first dive deep into the history of Red Bar Radio. According to Patrick Melton and others who are familiar with Mike David, there's a lot of plot twists and turns, so be expected for that as we get a historic day in the house as nancy pelosi is elected the first woman speaker the honorable nancy pelosi of the state of california we think there are going to be several hundred thousand people lined up friday night and saturday morning just to have the first one, just for that cool factor. The trick is getting your hands on one. David Pogue did, and as he showed us, step one is using your digits to unlock the iPhone's much-hyped features. If Osama bin Laden, wherever he is, needed a to-do list, he's got one now, courtesy of WikiLeaks, a secret State Department cable listing sites around the world vital to U.S. national security and public health. 2007 for Red Bar Radio isn't just another year. It's the year Mike David's journey into underground radio truly begins. The archives we have today may be spotty from 2006, but what remains tells the story of a man and his evolving vision for Red Bar Radio. Mike David and his Russian co-host Ron, a school friend, kicked things off. But like so many things in Red Bar's world, their partnership was short-lived. What followed was a revolving door of co-hosts. First Brian Biggs, then Kyle. But this is where the drama intensifies. Kyle's firing sparks a deep fallout, leading Brian, a longtime friend of Kyle's, to abruptly quit the show in solidarity. The tension, the betrayals, these would become hallmarks of Mike David's unpredictable world. Then enters Pat Bryce, a comedian who would later meet a tragic and eerie fate. In July 2006, Bryce made his first appearance on Red Bar Radio, only to die exactly one year and one day after his debut on the show. The eerie twist adds a haunting undertone to the narrative of that year. As the calendar inches forward, Red Bar Radio begins to build a new rhythm. David Angelo, who joins a few days later, brings a sharp, witty edge to the show. With his clever wordplay and biting humor, he quickly becomes a fan favorite. But Angelo is more than just another co-host. He represents the start of Mike's year-long experiment with rotating comedic talent. I don't want your addresses, but I also need to get you these gifts. <laughs> I swear to God, that's not a... They're gonna... You know what? The gifts are off the table. They're We'll figure out the gift. How about the gift is you have a successful YouTube channel and you're a big, big shot now because of me. How about that's the, the damn gift? By August 2006, Mike Bridenstein, a comedian whose friendship with David will extend far beyond this year, steps into the mix. Bridenstine's involvement deepens the Red Bar Radio roster, creating a web of intertwined relationships that would only become more complex in the following months. The real fireworks begin as 2007 dawns. Mike David sets his sights on Trent and Willie, marking him as the first comedian to fall victim to David's brutal brand of live on air and Hello? Trent and Willie. Yes, this is Trent and Willie. You're on the Red Bar Radio. Sha! What's up? What's up, man? How's it going? You're sitting here with comedians Mike Bridenstein oh, and James Fritz. I am. You are what? Oh, so I just heard so many. I heard somebody say, "What's going on?" or something, or "How are you?" And I was just saying, "I'm good. I have a show in a little bit. I'm excited." Oh, you're very excited. That's great, um, Trenton. We have a couple questions for you, and we want to we want you to answer these questions as honestly as possible. Time Out Magazine. Okay. Time Out Magazine just wrote a piece called "The Worst of 2006." Yes. The whole article was about you. Well I know, they were C words. And notice I'm censoring myself on like last time when I said the S word and I got in trouble. What is the S word? Uh, the S H I T exclamation point. Last time I was on uh, Red Bar Radio, I said that and people got mad. This isn't just a one off attack. This moment sparks what would become a two decade long tradition of David targeting comedians, dissecting them with an intensity rarely seen in the comedy world. Willie's story doesn't end there, though. He resurfaces years later on Kill Tony. All right, put your hands together for Trent and Willie, everybody. Yeah. Just... So, I want to tell you about my wife. 
<laughs> I came home and I said, where's my bowl full of lightning bolts? <laughs> Covered in sci-fi, fish beaks, and nightmare bacteria because I'm hungry. And she said, I was taking care of the kid all day. Now in a day with a hard opener. I mean, fuck yeah. Trenton, how long have you been doing stand-up? 2004. Wow. Wow. Are you on mushrooms now? I'm living inside of a purple triangle right now. Uh, yeah. uh, January 2007 isn't just about public feuds. Enter Jordan Vote Roberts, now a famous director but then a guest on Red Bar Radio. The encounter takes a dramatic turn when Vote Roberts storms out of Mike's apartment. Furious after Mike's fan base ruthlessly targets him, the tension reaches its peak in these moments. The unpredictable nature of Mike David's audience on full display. You still could reclaim your innocence and strength. All right, you guys win. I'm out of here. No, no, I'm no. Out. You're I'm not out. leaving. No, Angelo, he needs to find another ride home. No. Shug, oh, you on. won. You won. You're a better person than me. You're doing more with your life. You have grander aspirations. <laughs> Um, you're just more enriching to most people, so you guys have fun. Shug? Yeah, what's no, up, no, Mike? no, don't leave, Jordan, don't leave. Don't leave, come on, you can't let them win. These are very respectable internet people. <laughs> you can't leave. I'm done with this. How oh, can you be done with it? He's getting up, he's walking. Only in radio can magic like this actually happen in real life. The awkwardness in the studio is as thick as David Angelo's flowing hair. Uh, David Very Angelo nice, yeah. is just probably thinking, how am I going to get home? Uh, my brother, uh, he's mad at me now. He's And he didn't well, argue with that. Make sure you tell that guy that Angelo likes his limo a nice 72 degrees when he's done the show. He put you on his jacket, he that. put on his hat. He is walking out with not a head nod, nor a goodbye. Up oh, and a... a he wow, kind of a, slammed the door. That was a storm out of here. <laughs> well, you know what? Uh, Suge White actually won. He stormed right out of here. He stormed out of here. What are we going to do now? I couldn't create a bit better than this. I, did, I, I can save all my prep for next show. I didn't have to do a thing tonight. And then there's January 20th, 2007, the day Mike sells his mic away, claiming it was crawling with roaches. It's a small, bizarre detail that adds to the raw, unpolished chaos that defined Mike David's earlier days. I slept (laughs) two, and I wake up to sell my microwave. How much did you get for it? 20 bucks. 30 bucks. $30, $30, room. what do you do? I put all the stuff, I'm moving, I got almost everything packed, but I put everything I want to leave behind, I put it on Craigslist. And what do you uh, have left? I'll, I'll buy some stuff. Really? Yeah, what do you have left? Well, everything that I'm selling has been roach infested. So oh, I, what I do is I clean it out and I go, never had roaches. Hey, 30 bucks. Never had roaches. Never had roaches. Is that the brand? That's my sales pitch. That's the old cranberry. Oh, you guys want a coffee maker? Never was a nest for roaches. By February, more strange antidotes emerge. Mike Bridenstine, still by David's side, witnesses a peculiar scene in a Dunkin' Donuts. Mike berating a cashier over a missing item from his order, an event Bridenstine would later recount with a mixture of humor and disbelief. I wouldn't want to be like on the other end of any service industry dealing with you ever. <laughs> No, you wouldn't. No, like no. Any, with anything. No, no, because no. <laughs> I make people work for their money. Okay. Oh man, I went to Dunkin' Donuts with this guy. Oh, let's not oh, say God. any names. Uh, uh, Dunkin'. Uh, let's pretend we're a real radio show where we're afraid of everything. We're so afraid of home, and you fucking slut. <laughs> <laughs> they do guess the language. Oh, and somebody comes out and goes, you, oh, went yeah. Dun- you went to Dunkin' Donuts. Well, I went to Dunkin' Donuts with you. Oh, you did? When? This is oh, like a this is while ago. <laughs> Law years ago. Yeah. and uh, <laughs> But he hasn't changed an ounce. No, we were just going to walk over and get coffee, and he goes, right. put it all on the red bar card. So he's got like this sort of red bar, <laughs> uh, the red bar expense card. account. He has given the person behind the counter the business the about the last time he asked for bacon or something or extra something. No. <laughs> and they didn't give it to him. 
So he's like asking for like uh, an explanation. You're the reason comment cards exist, dude. In March 2007, a new co-host enters the picture, James Fritz. The relationship quickly deteriorates as Fritz grows uneasy with Mike's cutthroat approach. Tensions rise as Fritz begins to suspect Mike might betray him or publicly humiliate him on air. Their partnership reaches a breaking point in May when a massive argument erupts over whether female comedians deserve respect in the industry. Uh, I love how you prejudge the listeners really quickly, but I can't prejudge a female comic. Female comics. Yeah, that's a valid out. point, no, I James. I was judging him by what he said and what he looked like, and uh, you were judging. And the I'm female judging the female comics on what they say and what they look like. You're you fucking idiot. You're judging them by having no. Ovaries, I'm doing exactly the child. same thing as your 29 year old fucking stupid ass is doing, motherfucker. Point made. Okay, to you, maybe. God, it's like you defend your fucking own, but you don't look at the big picture point of the conversation. What's the big picture? And like me. Big picture point is that I had an opinion about female fucker. comics, which a lot of I'm people not, share. I'm not saying well, right, a lot of people think a lot of things bad. about blacks too. I'm just saying the ones that I've seen, it just seems like they're trying too hard. And I'm not saying that, that that's all of them. Right, exactly. But, uh, just the ones that I've seen. <laughs> And that's my opinion. I don't know. All right, that's fine. I've seen some funny female comics. That's my opinion. That's all I'm saying. Who? Who? Name some. Yeah. Um, I think um, we did name two earlier. Those were more famous. You should be able to top of your head, man. It should be. They well, should I don't want to name someone local because then you'll like verbally date rape them because you'll be like, oh, that bitch, I saw her, I didn't laugh. Oh, <laughs> no, no, no. Not you, Detroit Mike. Oh. These are people who are entertainers. They should have the right to be criticized. They're not normal people sitting here. You're I agree, but I've lost my shit laughing while females were on stage before. It's happened. I wasn't faking. You fucking. You but what I'm names? saying is, you're an easy laugh as far as stand-up comedy goes. No. I see you and I watch you, and you laugh at almost everybody. You, you. I have are, a loud laugh, but it's not consistent. I've you haven't never heard me like. But lose it's my safe shit. to say that it's easier to make a person like you're you right. laugh you're than most people. You're smarter than me, Mike. You're so. It's not smart. about being smarter than you. No, it's it about is. Making observations. Your sense of comedy is genius. It's and not it's gonna about go far. that. It's going to go real far. It's, it's farther than any of your friends. It's what you don't understand. I don't have any female any comic friends comic that comedy, criticizes me asshole. needs to know that I have more dedicated, loyal fans than any of you have combined. Good. Maybe they'll make you a scene. new iPod case. I don't That's give a all fuck. I'm saying. Is this a pissing so, contest? No, but I'm you're just making what it I one. enjoy. You know, you call all my listeners dipshits because they agree with me, no, but on fun. the same line, you guys aren't the ones with fans, okay? By June 2007, the comedians surrounding Red Bar are gaining notoriety. Mike Bridenstine lands a manager in Los Angeles, for example. Meanwhile, Mike David, seeing his peers rise, pleads with his audience to get him representation as a podcast host. Frustrated by his lack of recognition in the industry. Well, can I tell them that you're, uh, uh, you're moving plants? Yeah, if you want. Go for it. I was at uh, Confidential. No, you can do it. Mike uh, Bridenstine here told me that he's going to be uh, moving to Los Angeles, California in September. This September, which is kind of sad. Oh. You know? David Angelo is going to be moving to New York soon. Is he? Yep. Uh, you're moving to L.A. Uh, Fritz is moving towards a depression. Yeah. And uh, it's good. Yeah, you can. And I want to talk about this guy because this is your manager. Yeah. Could we say that? That your manager runs this website? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Your manager <coughs> runs a website called whipitoutcomedy.com. W-I-P. W-H-I-P. 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 Itoutcomedy.com. So whipitoutcomedy.com. Like, <laughs> itoutcomedy.com whipitoutcomedy.com I'm not gonna lie I want representation from your guy okay so every Red Bar listener go to that fucker site go to that fucker site whipitoutcomedy.com click on that fucker a million times tell your friends about it post bulletins about it get this guy to look at his stats then comes July 7, 2007. Mike David, in an almost comical twist of hypocrisy, eats pizza on the mic, something he just recently berated Joe Rogan for doing. This is New York style. It's piping hot. Hovered in Greece. Well, you know, that's how they make them. I'm going to actually dab mine. Oh, for Christ. It's too, too wet. I'm going to get it all over my iPhone. Whoa, yeah, the iPhone. I eat now around my iPhone. 
depending on what's going to be uh, greasy on my fingers and get on my iPhone. Greasy. Let's taste it. This is, uh, oh my God. Mm. Yeah. You like that fucking other place. This is a really good pie. No kidding. So if anyone wants to call in and talk about what oh kind of God. toppings they like. No, no, no. But just weeks later, things take a darker turn. On July 27th, 2007, Mike makes an unsettling confession. He's been letting his dogs defecate in his bathtub. The admission disgusts the comedians who frequent his studio, adding another layer to the already volatile environment. My dog? Forget it. No, I'm kidding. Absalon, I trust you. I think you're Although I don't want the dog it. living in squalor, which I imagine your apartment to be. <laughs> and I don't want you your staying dog, your here. Do- <laughs> Mike's dog is very discerning where it shits indoors. You know, it has to be a nice place. And really, hey, my dog shits in the <laughs> bathtub. Okay, I know that is convenient. By August fifteenth, two thousand and seven, Hannibal Buress arrives in the studio, marking yet another milestone in Red Bar's ever-growing guest list. As the year draws to a close, on December 12th, 2007, Mike David takes a moment to reflect. He looks back at the trail of comedians he's trashed over the year and begins to question how his role as a shock jock has impacted his ability to connect with them as co-host. It's a rare moment of introspection in an otherwise relentless, fast-paced show. This isn't just 2007 for Red Bar Radio. It's a year of betrayals, bold moves, and the seeds of the legacy that will define Mike David for years to come. What began as a radio show morphs into something bigger, a brutal, raw examination of the comedy world, one year at a time. And as you'll soon see, this is only the beginning. We're diving into Red Bar's entire archive, starting here, but we're far from finished.